And here comes the Asian champion, won that title in Dubai earlier this year, beating Abulkan Amankal of Kazakhstan in the final. And he has got past Lukash Feneza of Slovakia and Yuichi Moriwaki of Japan. He's a big, big middleweight, really long reach, left to the body throws left to the body again and again and again and again moves in behind a a lead left hand at times and he's not even really looking to land but comes in lands that left to the body moves onto the shoulder it's very difficult to do too much about it it's not the most spine tingling style you'll see but finding a way to counteract it Biz saf sabdan dilma geden okusu demiz. Mana bu kurtu da maksal olmayan gizde her bittesini Moskva Sankt Petersburg'de ulus terimiz alışın gizde mümkün. Dastar kemiz bir saatte, Uzbekistan'da ise bir kunda amal koşarladı. İndi kolay verse boş kaşakar boş zarazdegi poşlayan giz. İmni şu kurnuşta yiğitim oradı. Kurup durupsuz her bitte maksal olmayan upa kopya kalırken de vizikelerimiz burada bir zaten Solup upa kopya kalıp kurdu şu kurnuşke geledi de poşlayan giz bir kunuşu çıkardı. Üç gün torkunda fasıl kendine kabul koyuluşunuz mümkün. Beymalı olu zaka sıkışıyla mümkün. Videonun olsa da nominalarımız, kollarımız, operatörlerimiz çok gelişedi. Difficult, difficult job. Jennifer Huggins of Canada in charge. This our penultimate fight of the session. We've got one more after this. And that as well will of course be at middleweight. So there is Jafarov. As you say, he's, uh, he's a solid, solid middleweight. Big frame on him. Just pecking with that jab. Faints with the front foot. Kazim Zadi has, has got to get inside that that lead left, that lead right rather, and that left just sticks with the left there, Jafarov. Goes up to the head with the jab. Nicely balanced, Jafarov. Hands low, just trying to sucker him in at the moment. Goes to the body with the left hand there and just spins off to his right hand side flicks the jab up from the waist keeping it simple left hand down the middle just trading backhands there though those two both landed left to the body from Jafarov and flicking the jab up from the waist he's using that jab a lot more than he did in his last fight trying to snap it up from the waist and really using it as a as a weapon rather than just as a way of throwing that left hand to the body really as a trigger lead right uppercut from Jafarov who's who's come out quite aggressive here there's that straight left to the body left hand catches Kazim Zali to the body again as he was on his way in. Managed to get onto the inside there, Kazim Zadi, but couldn't quite get any punches away then. Just pushed off the, the face of Jafar off there with the, the heel of the glove. The referee noticed that. Straight left hand from Jafarov was nice and solid. Left hand to the body, jab up top, did a bit of a disservice actually when I was describing him stylistically at the start because this has been good to watch. He's been more expansive here than I've seen him. Leading off with a right uppercut. Again, the left to the body. Kazim Zadi has just not really had the opportunity to do much at all in this opening round because that jab has been sharp. Strong, straight left hand, whether it's been to the head or to the body. The balance with the feet has been as good as always, but he's pivoted around that front foot nicely as well. There's that left to the body. Really sinks that one in. Now goes the belt. And that is a round, a comfortable round for Jafarov. And the 
really was no other way you could possibly score that. Jabs the body. Again from Jafarov. There's that left hand. He's just been punching constantly. His single shots for the most part. But there's not been much of a gap between them at any stage. And they've been accurate and they've been sharp. And Kazim Zadi has struggled. He can't really get any momentum going because every time he tries to move into attack, he gets hit with something. Just has to start again Keeping him turning, keeping him moving. Left to the body from Jafarov again. And again, steps in with that one, throws it hard and then moves on to the shoulder. Straight left hand down the middle, just snaps back the head there of Kazim Zadi, and the second round has been exactly the same as the first. And he's winning this fight, Jafarov, with really sharp, basic tools. Jab, straight left hand. He's not even really throwing the one-two. Sometimes that lead left hand leads off with a hook there. It's single shots for the most part, almost always. Hands low. But good footwork there. He just turns off the ropes. Another good round for Jafarov. Another, another round that he's completely dominated. There's a 10 8 in there from, from India. The scoring system is that you can score 10 9, 10 8, or 10 7. 10 9 for a, a close round, 10 8 for a round that a fighter has dominated. 10-7 for just pure domination from beginning to end. You don't see many 10-7s. I've had one in this championship so far. And that would qualify as a 10-8. You could, you, could, you could very much argue that. You could go 10-9 or 10-8 there, I think. Either is absolutely fine. But just because you don't rock someone to their boots or have them reeling around the ring, you don't have to do that to dominate a round. He landed plenty, he barely took a punch. That's a dominant round, and that's how the Indian judge scored that 10 8.
So into the third and final round. He's just going to keep coming here, Kazim Zadi. Very similar dynamic to the fight we've seen in the last couple, actually. The one between Bisharmov and Matoa, the one between Schumann and Musavi. And this has been exactly the same. A point deduction there. For coming in low with the head for Kazim Zadi. Not that it's really going to matter. That's a midway point of round three. It'll be good to watch these last three fights. They have been very similar, but it's just, it's always impressive to see somebody just completely dominate the fight with very solid basics, with a good jab. And all three of them are kind of delivered in the same way. They all have low hands. They all carry those hands low and flick it up from the waist. All of them. Bisharmov, Schumann, now Jafarov. Still going here, Kazim Sadi, trying to press, trying to push. But that tipping point that I mentioned in the in the previous fight, do you sometimes see when the pressure fighter just gets to their man and the fight changes? That has never, ever looked like happening here, just as it's never looked like happening in the previous fight and the one before that. So that's a dominant, dominant display from... Side Jamshid Jafarov. And I did say at the start of the fight that his style possibly isn't the most spine tingling you will see, but I kind of take that back because I did find that good to watch. I did find that good to watch. Most people tuning into this coverage will be would be on the boxing purist side of the fence. We all have a good tear up and a knockout, but I think we can all appreciate that too. What we've just seen there, what we've seen in the last three fights. There was the point deduction in there as well, of course. And there was the career judge went the way of Kazim Zadeh in that final round. So that was a, another comprehensive win. Jafarov goes through to the quarterfinals. And our final fight of the session in ring B, again, is at middleweight. We're upon Jong Jaho of Thailand. And Ivan Papakin of Ukraine. That will be with us shortly.